In this video, I want to show you how to install Postgres on a Linux Mint distribution that I'm having. In fact, this is fairly easy. This is actually as easy as getting to the moon, and I'm going to show you how to do it. The easiest way to start installing Postgres is to go to the postgresql.org slash download section, and there's a list of distributions supported. I'm going to choose Linux Ubuntu because I'm using Linux Mint and this is based on Ubuntu. But if you have any other flavor of Linux, you will probably find the instructions here. So I'm gonna follow Ubuntu. And here installation instructions contains basically a few steps. First of all is that you have to import the certificate from the Postgres repository, which is done in this command. The caveat here is that you need to know your Ubuntu version in order to import the repository correctly. And in order to do that, I will use my terminal and I will print the content of the file slash etc slash os release. And here my Ubuntu code name will be written in the last line. And in my case, this is Bionic. So if you're using Mint as I do, Mint has its own versioning and names for the packages. And in this case, Tessa is the name of the mint flavor. And I need to know Ubuntu name, which is Bionic. So once I know the code name for my Ubuntu version, I can edit this file. I will need sudo. Type in my password. And here I need to paste this line but I need to modify the Ubuntu version to be Onic. Now I can save it and quit. So once I go back to the, the instructions, the next line, it says, I need to import the certificate with apt key. I'm gonna just paste this command as well. Now it's done. I will now update the cache of apt so that it knows about my new repository. Now it is done. And the next step is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna show you how to install Postgres from the package manager, which is as easy as getting to the Synaptic package manager from the menu. And here I should be able to search for Postgres. I'm going to use version 11 for this tutorial. And I'm going to install a package called Postgres 11, which includes, it's a virtual package that includes the client and common libraries and whatever it needs to install. And I'm going to also select PG admin. This is the client that we're going to use later. And I'm going to install the version four or the PG admin client. This also is going to install a bunch of packages, a bunch of dependencies. Let's go on and just click apply. This will take a while to download the packages and install them. So I'll just make a fast forward. Okay, now it's done. I can close this window and my packages are installed. I can safely close the Synaptic Package Manager window. And now let's try to connect to the database. After we are done with the installation, we can now open the pgAdmin client that we have just installed. When you run pgAdmin for the first time, it will suggest you to create the master password, which is the password that will be used for you only to encrypt the passwords for the databases. I will choose my default password that I'm using also for my computer. Once you're trying to connect to the database from pgAdmin for the first time or from any other client, you have to have one additional step, which I will cover in a moment. In order to connect to the database, you need a password. And by default, the user Postgres was created on the database, but it doesn't have a password set. So the only thing that we need now to create a password on the database. 
Now let's switch to the terminal and I can show you how to do it. I have to impersonate myself as the user Postgres, which I will first do sudo su. I will go first to the root. You might need to enter password for, for root. And after that, I will do su Postgres. And I will impersonate myself as the Postgres user. And I will now execute the default text client PSQL that comes with the default Postgres libraries. And this will succeed. I will connect from the Postgres user from my machine to the database with the user Postgres. And now I can set a password by typing password. And now I will create a new password. And by default, it is just the same as Postgres. And I have to repeat it again. And now it will have the password set on the database level. By default, it tries to connect from the user Postgres again. And now if I type in Postgres, this will finally succeed. So congratulations. Now you have successfully connected to the database. You have installed the Postgres and the default client and also PG admin client. And now we can continue with more tutorials. Thanks for watching.